All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and the Shalom to the elect. Um, now, I was watching this uh, documentary. It's called The Gates of Jerusalem, A History of the Holy City. And um, it's a uh, good doc documentary. You know, it goes into the history. But the only thing, you know, when I watch these documentaries, you know, Esau um, throws his, uh, you know, his little jabs in there. You know, um, of course, he's going to make, um, you know, all the characters Edomites and, you know, you know, white supremacy, you know. And the another the reason why I'm, um, you know, bringing up this lesson is because. When Esau do these um, documentaries on, you know, Jerusalem and Israel, when he goes into the history, right, he, um, they almost tell you and almost have to bring up the uh, fact that the original people in that land um, are not the uh, actual, um, you know, um, the natives, the uh, inhabitants of that land. The people that's over in Israel now aren't the people, you know, the original people are the uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you know. And he goes into the history about, um, you know, the temple, the first um, temple, you know, uh, King David and then King Solomon and then so on and so on. Then he goes into the actual, uh, you know, when we went into captivity under the Babylonian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, and... uh you know, when they uh, destroyed, the Babylonians destroyed the first temple. And then, you know, Zerubbabel, he um, built the second temple, you know. So he goes into that. But what I was surprised about is he actually mentioned, um, brought up Esau, you know. And um, a lot of times they try to skip over that part, you know, because they don't want to reveal who they really are, you know, which is the devil. But, you know, the wicked son of uh, Jacob. But he actually mentioned it, you know, he just said it and then he, you know, just kept on going. But and I was surprised, but I'm going to play a little bit of this uh, and then we go to um, get a couple scriptures or whatever. But uh, let's let's go. Finally, in 536 B.C., a smaller temple was started on the foundation of Solomon's temple by the Jewish leader Zerubbabel. Nearly 500 years passed before true pomp and spectacle returned to the Temple Mount. Herod the Great, an Idumean, was made king by the Romans. Herod was a descendant of Esau, the son of Isaac. Isaac also fathered Jacob. Before Herod... You see, he said, es uh, Herod was the son of... Uh, was a descendant of Esau. So he, you know, he actually said it. You know, and Herod, Herod would be, Herod is an Edomite, you know, Herod would be, um, and Herod, and if you do the, uh, if you um, do the history, Herod would uh, look like, look like a Jake, you know, but he was an Edomite, you see, see, it's, it, it goes by your father's uh, seed line, see, so he would, he would, um, he was one of those, uh, his father was, he came from the descendants of Esau, but he laid up with an Israelite woman, you know, and that's how, you know, he blinked. Esau always tried to get his, get his color back, back or whatever, you know, so he would be one of those Amalekites. If you, uh, you know, look into, um, if you research it, if you look it up, he would be, um, he was uh, um, on the Amalekite side, if I'm not mistaken. And, and a lot of those, uh, to this day, a lot of those Amalekites, they, um, some of them, um, you know, got woolly hair and everything, but that's the, they are still Edomites because it goes by the, your father's line. You know, that, that's the Amalekite. They always was the uh, head tribe of uh, Esau, you know, which they call Jewish today. They took on our nationality. And this was an, another example on how uh, Herod, they took on, they, they were what you would say converts. They took on our, our nationality and he blended in. Because, you know, he laid with an Israelite woman, you know, and that was uh, 
that's against the law. Our woman not supposed to lay with the other nations, you know, which they are today. They running wild, you know, today, you know. But our woman wasn't supposed to lay, lie down and um bring help bring forth seed for the other nations, you know. She was supposed to um stay with the Israelite man, you know. That way, you know, you bring forth your uh your seed, you know. And and um when an Israelite woman lay with the other nations, see, that's basically being a bed wench, you know, because you 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 helping um, bring forth the other nation's seed instead of your own, you know, because when you come back, you come back through your father's lineage, you know, and that's what uh, these other nations understand, you know. So the so-called black woman, you know, some most a lot of them are doing us a disservice, basically, you know. But that's a whole nother subject. But, you know, I just had to throw that in there for, you know, you know, to tell you about Herod, because Herod was, you know, he he would blend right in, you know. But let's go on with the uh, documentary. Was born, his family was forced to convert to Judaism. However, he was never accepted or respected by his Jewish subjects. See, because they knew he was an Edomite. You see, but he looked like the like an Israelite. So that's a perfect example. Now, you know, you can have you can have uh, Edomites that look just like Jake, you know, but it's in the spirit. A lot of Jake see it in the spirit like Damn, this guy is different. You know, it's a, it's, it's a spiritual thing. Vice versa. You can have a Jake that look like an Edomite, you know. That's how this thing going now, you know, and it's all. um through the power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. You know, he set it up like that. The new King Herod was one of the most complex and unpredictable leaders ever to rule the Jewish state. Herod could be a generous benefactor and builder one day and a paranoid, sadistic killer the next. See, he was he was a, he was ruthless, you know. And that's and as as this uh documentary go on. He would have to go into the history of how, um, which he is, you know, how the, um, the Israelites, they lost their inheritance. And, um, well, matter of fact, let's get a scripture. Let's, um, and I'm going to come back to the documentary. Um, let's get Jeremiah chapter 17. And I'm going to start at verse, I'm going to go to verse four. It says, and thou, even thyself. Talking about Jeremiah, you know, this is the Lord talking to Jeremiah. It says, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the Lord's talking to Jeremiah. He said that and thou even thyself talking about him, talking about Jeremiah, you know, and Jeremiah, uh, you know, if you understand reincarnation, you know, because reincarnation is very uh, uh, real. You know, uh, re Jeremiah has came back, you know, whether he's in the spirit world or, you know, if he's on earth right now, you know, far as, you know, he might be one of the brothers in, in GMS, you know. Now, we don't know exactly, you know, who we, we can't point out and say, oh, yeah, that's Jeremiah and that's Zerubbabel and that's nah. But we know we know the uh, the, uh, the the life cycle, you know, or how how the life Let's put it like this, the life process, life cycle, you know, reincarnation, regeneration, you know, and, and this is, this is regeneration right here. It says, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah died knowing that he was an Israelite. So what is that talking about? That's talking about when he come back in a reincarnation, it says, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not, you know. And that was over here, over here in the mark. And it says, "For ye have kindled a fire in my anger," meaning we got the Lord. We had the Lord burned up, man. We had the Lord hot. You know, He was angry with us. It says, "We shall burn forever," and that forever means a long time, you know. And um. And you can connect, matter of fact, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Because uh, the Lord said Jeremiah himself, you know, 
even him himself shall uh, discontinue from his heritage. So Jeremiah wasn't going to um, know he was an Israelite in the, in the future, you know. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy's. Where is it at? Um, well, let's read uh, Deuteronomy's uh, 28 and Deuteronomy's 28 and 68. Well, we can start at uh, 66. It says, and, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Uh, meaning, he ain't know whether he was going to live or die, you know, in the near future. And that's how we feel now. Um, you know, uh, growing up in the inner cities of uh, these cities, um, all throughout America, you know, you could walk out and get shot or whatever, you know. It says, in the morning thou shalt say, would Yahweh it were even, and at even thou shalt say, would Yahweh it were morning for the fear of thine heart, wherewith shall thou shalt fear, and for thy sight of thine eyes, which shall, thou shalt see. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, and uh, process of elimination, who are... Uh, that only happened to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you know, starting with the uh, the Northern tribe, you know, starting, starting with the uh, Christopher Columbus and the slave trade, you know, because they were the first to go on those ships. And that's what people get um, get a misunderstanding right there, that the uh, the slave trade started with, a, with the Northern tribe. All right. It says, um, it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. What that remind you of? Let's go back to Jeremiah. Let's go back. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Don't that, don't that sound familiar? It says, and that's talking to Jeremiah. So Jeremiah was going go through all of this, you know, every time he came back, you know, he was going to, you know, Jeremiah was going, going those ships, you know, it says, let's read it. It says, and thou even thyself shall, even Jeremiah shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. So, <laughs> What's all right? Let's go to. Let's go to. Let me see. And in that documentary, he he, he, will, he will have to bring up that those people aren't the original people. That pe those people that's in that land right there. We was at Jeremiah. See, so, so we read that right. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, and let's uh, let me see. Let me see. Let's let's start at thirty six. Deuteronomy twenty eight and thirty six. It says, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou set, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation, which neither thy, thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shall thou serve other gods wooden stone. So we just read that in Jeremiah. That was basically saying the same thing. Let's go down to um, 48. Let's go down to 48. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall set against thee, and hunger and thirst and nakedness and everything and all wants of things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So Jeremiah was going to go through all his harsh things that the Lord put upon us, you know? Even the yoke upon thy neck. Let's go back. Matter of fact, okay, let's read. It's 49. And, and who's the only nation on earth that uh, Esau put a yoke of iron on? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And check this out. When, when you look at the pictures of yoke, yoke of iron, you see a black man. But guess what? Christopher Columbus and the other, uh, they, they did that to the northern tribe as well. They did harsh things to the northern tribe. 
And that yoke of iron, they put that on a northern tribe as well. I, 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 I found out that they did it to the uh, the Taino Indians as well, because that was a practice um, in the, um, the uh, eastern hemisphere that they brought over on this side to put a yoke of iron. You know, it was all done through the Lord. Uh, let's read it again. Forty nine. And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So let's go back. It says, let's go back to uh, Jeremiah. That's the same thing he, he's saying in Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah 17 and four. And he's talking to Jeremiah in his scripture. It says, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy herds that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. So, hey, Jeremiah had to go into slavery as well, you know. So Jeremiah came back on this side. He went through slavery. So Jeremiah will be a so-called uh, Negro Latino and a Native American. He's a he's one of he's one of the brothers. I can I can uh, assure you that he's one of the brothers. All right, let's go back to the documentary. Okay, it didn't want to play. Hold on, Salaki brothers. Uh, my wife. And in an effort to stop the prophesied birth of a new Jewish messiah, he once ordered the execution of all boys under the age of two who were born in Bethlehem. See, that Edomite, that goddamn Edomite demon devil um, did the same thing um, as they doing now, as they always did. They always try to cut off um, the seed line of Israel. And, and, and that's what the so-called black woman is doing um, now, in this time, she's helping Esau uh, cut off the seed line, you know, through this feminism, you know. What's the first thing a black woman do when uh, they have, you know, uh, you know, I'm talking, not all sisters, but what's the first thing they do um, when they get pregnant? Have, a, have an abortion. And Esau knows this, you know, all this feminism and abortion, that's another way of... Uh, you know, cutting off the uh, the young Israelite uh, men and women, but mainly the boys, because why did, why, why? Now let's ask this question. Why did he only want to cut, uh, kill the young boys? Why is that? Because this, cause of the seed, the seed line that they understand that when you have a baby boy, he carries the seed of the nation. You see, they ain't worried about the women. He ain't kill a woman. Because they want the women as bed wenches. They want, they want to, they, that's more, uh, that's more goods for them. They want to lie with the women, you know. But you got, you, you have to understand that, you know. And that's why the scriptures, that's why the Lord said he called the men to do this work. You know, because the women don't understand that. The women, they just go, the women of the other nations, they just go with the winning um, team right now you know and that's how women are set up you know that's why the lord called the men to do this work because the the women are natural followers you know the roman emperor octavius once remarked it is better to be herod's pig than his son but his reign was a time of stability and wealth in israel he began financing improvements in the infrastructure of the city, building magnificent new palaces and citadels. He built the largest port in the ancient world, Caesarea, and completed an elaborate water storage system all across the nation. Perhaps remembering the financial benefits of Solomon's temple, Herod began expanding and refurbishing the old temple structure. He started the work about 20 years before the birth of Christ. The resulting temple was about twice the size of Solomon's. It required 10,000 builders. Herod tried to do everything by the book, so when it came time to build the Holy of Holies, he had 1,000 priests trained in masonry, 
so no unclean hands would touch the sacred walls. The construction took about 46 years to complete. At this point, the Temple Mount encompassed about 35 acres. Herod created vast porticos around the huge courtyard and linked the temple area to the city by a series of bridges and staircases. So if you brothers, um, you know, want to finish watching a documentary, you know, it's called The Gates of Jerusalem, A History of the Holy City, you know. And I hope this was edifying to the body, you know. Um, I hope, yeah, I hope the body, you know, got something out of it as far as like, um, you know, the nation and how the other nations, that's, that's not the original um, people in that land, you know. You are the, are the Israelites, you Negroes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is your heritage, right? This is your, your true heritage, a Hebrew Israelite, you know. You're not black. You're not African-American, you know. You're not Negro. You're a Hebrew Israelite, you know. So I hope this was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Bahashem Rakah Kwadash. Till again, Shalom.